that's the move. I'm helpless when I'm holding you away. This week, I will be judging Howl's Moving Castle. Look at how pretty it is. Before I start off, please take the survey in the description. It really helps with my stuff. Uh, it is a different survey than the ones in the Shatter Me video, Cinder video, those first three videos or whatever. Please take it. it really helps. Awesome. So we will now be jumping into the summary. Sophie, our main protagonist, is working in a hat shop when she unknowingly attracts the attention of the Witch of the Waste, who puts a curse on her, so now she is cursed to look like a old hag. Since she's not able to tell anyone or talk about it, it's one of the layers of the curse, she decides to leave home and go to her only chance at breaking the curse, the moving castle in the hills where the heartless howl along with his sneaky demon lives. So we will now be jumping into the non-spoiler review. The writing was very similar to Ghibli. It's a lot like watching the Great British Baking Show, just very calming, very peaceful. Yeah. It's great. The characterization is very funny and charming. It's done very delicately. All of the characters have a lot of flaws and a lot of redeeming qualities and they're very complex. The pacing of this book is amazing. The first like half of the book, not much happens. They're chilling, but it's written so well that I just like, I don't care. There are a lot of plot points that are casually mentioned in the first part that are then brought up later and are seen in a different light, which is very cool. And the characters tend to assume one thing in the beginning and then it changes later as that plot point resurfaces, uh, which I thought was really cool. The world building in this book is super fun, super interesting. The magic in this book is very specific and almost it makes it very dreamlike, almost kind of dream logic. The time period is also very ambiguous, which I really enjoyed. You really don't know when this story is set, and it just adds to that dreaminess. We also get to know a little bit about the culture of the world. For example, Sophie doesn't think that she's going to amount to anything because she is the eldest, and eldest, the oldest pe sibling oldest child is the most unlucky and is not going to amount to anything. I thought that was very interesting as she becomes arguably one of the most adventurous of the three sisters. With the characters, they really just jump off the page at you. Sophie, as an old lady, is so awesome. She is so sarcastic and just like no nonsense. She's always been like that, but the old lady really brings that out of her. All the characters are so lovable. There are a bunch of little moments that really just add up, especially with Howl, just that reveal how complex complex they are. The pacing was very good. I'm gonna have to get into how why it's good in the later sections. My one complaint that I had would be the main romance in here. It happens at the very end and it just right out of left field. <laughs> Boom. Romance. It wasn't built up at all, which I was really sad about because the two characters would be so awesome together. In the movie, the characters are a lot more kind and they tone down their flaws a lot more, which I wasn't too mad about. They change a bunch of plot points as well, which I actually enjoyed. The book is awesome and I love the plot, but it's not Ghibli. Ghibli, it's too plotty for Ghibli. I would highly recommend reading the book and watching the movie. They are both so good in their separate ways. They're great. We get to know more about the world and the magic in the book as well as the characters. Sophie's sisters are much bigger in this and you also get to know more about Howl. In the Ghibli movie, not much was really explained about the plot. That didn't really matter because it's a Ghibli movie. So I gave this book four and a half out of five stars. I thought it was great. So we will now be jumping into the spoiler review. So if you don't want spoilers, uh, now be the time to click away and go read this book because it's really good. So all of the characters in this book are very flawed, but they all have really good qualities about them that kind of balance those flaws out. And this book really dives into these shortcomings of these characters. Uh, for example, Sophie, I really loved her. She's so snarky and she just takes absolutely no crap from Howl, who is just so full of crap. She's very reasonable and down to earth. Like when she was turned into an old lady, she was like, healthy and you know she's just really kind of like rolling with the punches she also struggles with not standing up for herself because she thinks that she's the eldest she can she's not gonna amount to anything sure i'll inherit the hat shop i don't need a wage why would fanny pay me a wage you know and then there's howl who is obviously very deeply flawed he's incredibly vain he's a coward etc but he's actually a very kind person and there is a distinct line that you need to be aware of when you're going to write a character that's like flawed but a really good person on the inside you know you can't have it be well he's abusive but uh got a heart of gold so 
you know, excuse all those manipulative times. No, that's not how. You can see that in the way that he genuinely wants to help people. He helped Sophie and she just like kind of walked right in and he was like, well, I guess this lady's here. And then he was like, oh shoot, she's under a curse. And he brought her to his old teacher. He tried to go at the curse a bunch of times himself. He did a bunch of things to try and help her that he really didn't need to. He also helped Michael when he didn't need to. Michael just kind of, people just kind of like show up at Howell's house. He's just like, I guess you're here now then, okay. He also freaking gave his heart to a fire demon, AKA Calcifer, because he felt bad for him. This kid. He also knew he was a coward but tried to save Prince Justin anyways and he's actually a very brave person. He's just convinced himself he's a coward. He's also really dramatic. This man dyed his hair the wrong color and had a full meltdown where he oozed green slime over everything and almost killed Calcifer. This man needs to get a grip. And he's always falling in love with people. Why is he always falling in love with people? Like a clown. Because he's heartless, so he can't truly fall in love with someone. Obviously, there's Calcifer. He's great. Having him voiced by Billy Crystal in the movie was perfect choice. Then there's Letty and Martha, who are Sophie's sisters. And they are side characters, but they are very complex and very interesting and you get to know them pretty well. They have flaws and they have redeeming qualities and they have goals for their lives that they go out and they try and achieve, you know? And I thought that was very interesting how even the side characters get kind of their own sort of a story. Then we get to Miss Angorian. At first I was very confused as to what she was going to do. I was like, what are you, what are you doing? But in the end, I thought it was a very cool way to incorporate whales into the story. I thought that was very interesting how Howell is from Wales, our world, the United Kingdom. The curse she placed on Howell was actually really cool. I liked how it was a poem and you didn't really know how all of these things were going to happen and sometimes you didn't even know what it was, like a wind to advance an honest mind. What? what? But once it happened it was so cool and it made so much sense with both the plot and the characters and it was it was always a very cool moment. She does moods very well so you could tell like oh something's happening. The writing is so calming, so good. It makes my soul just go, oh, breath of fresh air. The pacing is also incredible. How many plot points that were mentioned in the first section that were brought out in the second section was so satisfying and so interesting. And how a lot of them taught the characters uh, not to assume things. Like with Fanny, she came back and Sophie realized that the situation at the hat shop was a lot different than she realized and a lot different than Martha realizes. So she goes through three different sets of realizations with that. She goes through the first one where she's like, yeah, Fanny's fine. She's doing great. And she goes, oh, Fanny should pay me a wage. And then she goes, oh, Fanny had her struggles too. And that was like with all the plot points. And I was like, oh, 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 oh. Account of Cataract, we hear from him that like this Jane girl ran off with him and wow, how lucky she is. And we realize, oh, the Count of Cataract isn't actually that great. And so you kind of learn not to just take things at their face value. And also the fact that Sophie was brought to Mrs. Penstroman because Howell wanted to see if she could lift the curse and all of that plot point was more like plot based and so there's a plot that you don't realize is going on which is so fun to reread. It doesn't make it boring to read the first part. Reading the first part for the first time is super fun and you're like oh this book is great I'm having so much fun but then when you get to the end and you're like oh shoot all that stuff was happening for a reason and all of that was kind of leading up to this thing and I didn't even realize it. Then you can go back and you can start picking out all of the little bits of foreshadowing and what Howell's plan was because you don't even really realize he's got a plan until the very end. And you get to see Calcifer's hints and you get to see all of that and it's really, it's really fun to reread this book. I love this book. The way it's written, it's just, it's written like a G Ghibli movie. <laughs> that first section, it's just written like a Ghibli movie. It's great. The one complaint I would have would be the relationship between Howell and Sophie. There's like no build up at all. There was one moment where she was like, oh crap, I kind of like him. But even that was out of the blue. It was just kind of the end. They were like, wow, looking at each other's eyes like, oh. And I was like, what? It would have been better if they'd left it much more ambiguous and then picked up their relationship again in a sequel or something. Maybe there would be a hinting at it. 
but not quite so strongly where you're like, oh boy. Their, their relationship, really, they were just friends. I'm really sad because they are so good for each other. Howell is so dramatic and extra and just so full of crap, as I said before. But at his heart, he actually is a kind person who's really brave and really generous. And Sophie will take none of his crap and put up with exactly zero shenanigans and be like, stop being full of crap. I know what you're like. In the words of Sophie slithering out of things, face your problems. How she helps him with that. And then she, when she is like, oh, I'm the eldest. I'm like, you know, I can't do anything. Howell refutes that multiple times. He's like, that's garbage. He helps her with her flaw. And they're just, they're so good. But it wasn't built up right. Uh, yeah, that was really sad for me. I was like, Compared to the movie, they did change a bunch, but I was not mad about it. Michael is younger in the movie, all of the characters' flaws are more toned down, a lot of the plot is eliminated. In the book, you get to learn a lot more about what the Scarecrow is. The witch is much more important to the plot. Howl is actually from Wales in the UK, Sophie's sisters are much more important to the plot. But because it's a Julie movie, it works. So a lot of conflict isn't going to go well with peaceful. I would highly recommend both the book and the movie, knowing what the book is about actually makes the movie better and honestly it doesn't really matter what order you watch them in they're both great i gave this book four and a half out of five stars i really enjoyed this book i forgot how much i enjoyed this book again please take the survey down in the description in other words zuko is really cute he has extra toes look at him extra toes all right see you guys later bye summer It's hot in this thing. <sighs> then we get to Miss Anna, Anna, Miss Anagorian, Anagor, Anna, Angorian, Miss Angorian. <laughs> My cat wants to get in. I'm letting him in. Come on in. Oh shoot! Keep eating my thing off. Okay. He's baby! Because Ghibli movies are not plot movies. Um, they're very... I hate, I don't know. I'm looking up the word. They're like a shelter, I guess.